panel. If you're new here, my name is Olivia. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um As you can see, I'm in my red, white, and blue because it's the 4th of July week. And um, so just representing uh, my red, white, and blue. But today I wanna talk to today parenting and just my perspective um, of a mom of five, um, four biological and one bonus daughter, but just um, some of the differences in parenting, um, you know, with boys versus girls and parenting from an American point of view, but I'm a Jamaican. My mom is Jamaican. I was born in the United States, but lived for a part of my childhood in Jamaica and then lived for a part of my childhood in the United States. And just the way my mom parent was completely different than how I have chosen to parent. And so just kind of want to dive into that a little bit. So Grab you something to drink and come on up and let's dive into this conversation. So I made little notes for myself to kind of help to keep me on track. And so I mentioned before that my mom is Jamaican um, and I'm an American and then my dad was American. And so living in Jamaica and being parented by a Jamaican, a, a Jamaican mom, my mom was a no nonsense. Um, she definitely believed in don't, um, what is, what's the saying? Don't spare the rod and spoil the child. I think Jamaicans and a lot of Island people and third world country people um, really live by like, if your kid gets out of line, you know, it's a spanking situation. It's a belt. It's a switch situation where um, my perspective on that is a little bit different. Yes, I do believe in the scriptural piece of raising your children a particular way, but parenting from an American um, standpoint, a modern day um, standpoint, there is definitely consequences. Like I've taken, my kids have lost things like, you know, hanging out with their friends, like going to a special event, um, even like Christmas presents and birthday parties. I, if, if it's a severe behavior, I will pull everything because it's my perspective that those things are not necessities to life right? Having a birthday party with all your friends is not a necessity to life. That's that's a liberty. That's a bonus. That's a gift. And so if they're like acting up in school, if they've like been suspended from school for poor choices, you know, like, you know, behaviors that are continuous behaviors, I will pull everything. I'm that mom. But on the other hand, now, a lot of like older school, traditional parents didn't tell their kids that they love them, right? My mom was one of those moms, didn't say, oh, you know, babe, I love you or anything like that. I definitely believe that she loved me, but she didn't speak the words, right? And I'm the opposite with my parent and stuff. I tell my kids I love them all the time. I hug on them. I kiss on them. My, especially my 16 year old doesn't really like that so much. He's like, get off me, you're weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not weird. Moms are supposed to tell their sons that they love them, They're supposed to hug them and hold their hands and all that kind of stuff. So while my mom didn't say that, you know, she loved me, she definitely treated me, you know, that she loved me, you know, there was all the things, but the verbal piece I always had an issue with and I made sure that my kids hear how much I love them. You saw my little one walked right by there, real life, um, you know, that they hear that I love them. But, you know, so continuing on to some of the things, um, the, the diversity, the difference between my Jamaican mom and Jamaican culture versus um, um, an American culture. One of the things that my mom did that I really loved and appreciated, she didn't put any pressure on me or expectations on me when it came to my education. Like in some cultures, you are expected, you know, you know, 
Do your parents expect you to be whatever, whether it's a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer where my mom didn't do that. And I appreciated that. And I've kept that um, going with my children. So um, Jamaican schooling is, uh, in my opinion, it's more elevated, it's more stringent, it's more challenging than the typical American public education, right? So I didn't get all A's, I didn't get all B's, I struggled, you know, in certain subjects. And my mom's perspective was, did you do your best? If you did your best, then your best is good enough for me. Right. If I needed help, then certainly she would try to find me, you know, support with tutoring or whatnot. Um, but she didn't expect that I get an A in every class. And I'm I'm that way with my kids. Now, my kids are, you know, and a lot of parents will say this, but for the most part, my children are, you know, like really smart, sometimes more smarter than me. I have to admit it. Right. But the thing with me is I didn't I, I have not expected for them to always get an A. I expect them to do their best. Now, with saying that, all of my kids are A kind of kids because they're so smart. And so um, if they're getting less than an A because they've not put the work in or because they think it's like, especially high school, oh, I don't need that class. Then I do have that conversation. Like, look, you know, if you're wanting to go to college and they're all different, some wanted to go to college, some didn't. It wasn't an expectation for me that they have to go to college. But if I know that they're an A student and they're getting, they're not doing the work or they do the work and don't turn it in, which is some of the, the struggles that I faced. Um, and because they didn't turn it in, they're getting like a D or like an F. We have a conversation like you're not an F kind of kid. You're not a D kind of kid, right? You're so smart. So what really is the issue? And let's really dive into that. And with my boys, I've had to do that more than with my daughter. So my oldest is my daughter, um, she's turning 28 this year. Then I have three sons, um, turning 25, turning 17 and turning 12 this year, right? With my boys, they had particularly specific challenges, ADHD, attention deficit with hyperactivity. And so that brings some different things into play, right? And some of the things that that brought into play is, some of them would do the work, but not turn the work in. They need the reminder to turn the work in, right? And so we've had to work on that um, quite a bit. And then I've had to be the backup to make sure, you know, by checking power school or whatever system you guys' as kids' school uses, checking power school to see what was assigned and when it's due and if it wasn't turned in, and then making sure the kid turns it in, right? So those are some of the things that, you know, my parenting style is a little bit different with giving them that support. Whereas my mom, she was like, yeah, I saw you studying and you brought home a C or you brought home a B. As long as you know you did your best, I'm good with that. She wasn't good with like cutting class and I didn't do any of that. Um, my kids don't really do any of that. But as far as the expectation for schoolwork, for academic work, um, we're kind of on the same page. My mom and I are kind of on the same page. The Jamaican, the original Jamaican versus the Jamaican modern day parenting, right? Um, and then another thing I want to talk about too is responsibilities. So I'm an only child um, and I had mad responsibilities from an early age. Being the oldest grandchild um, in the family, I was the family babysitter. So I started babysitting around eight, nine, you know, babysitting. And I had like mad chores. Like I had to, you know, wash dishes. I had to wash laundry. And it wasn't like we had a washing machine. It was wash laundry by hand, right? Um, clean and mop and, you know, polish the floor and wash my mom's china. And my mom was super strict. The house had to be super organized. Everything had to sparkle and shine. Everything had a home. Um, and so that was my reality with a Jamaican mom, where as an American mom, a Jamaican mom, I'm a little bit um, more relaxed, not all the way, 
I want a clean house. My boys have chores. Um, like my 17 year old, he, his chores are specific. He's the bathroom person, right? Um, he has to take the garbage out a couple times a week. My 11 year old, he has to load and unload the dishwasher every day. He is my sweeping and dusting um, kind of guy. And then my older two that are now adults, you know, they all had chores. Like I think around like three years old, my kids had to like put their dirty clothes in their hamper in their room and take it to the laundry room. They had to help me strip and make the bed. You know, we stripped the bed once a week, right? So there were specific things. Um, I even had like smaller containers with milk and cereal where they could serve themselves on cereal day, which was twice a week. They could serve themselves cereal. Um, so, you know, while they don't have the amount of responsibilities I had at the different age ranges, they all have like chores. And it's a non-negotiable for me. There are times where like when my son, my son, my middle son, um, Gabe is in robotics and when robotics is, is in full swing, full season, that with school, I do kind of lax a little bit with that because he has a lot on his plate. And then with my older kids, when they were doing like sports or marching band or, you know, different things, I did adjust, but their chores and their responsibility never completely went away because I teach my kids that our family is a unit. It's teamwork. Everything is not going to be on me. And I know for some moms, that's a reality where they have to take care of everything. I don't feel like that's fair. I feel like if you give your kid an out, then you're missing an opportunity to teach them about real life situations. Like when they have their own apartments and they, their own houses, they have to know how to clean. They have to know how to strip their bed. They have to know how to clean out your refrigerator once a month and wipe everything down and clean out your microwave once a week and, you know, wash your laundry at least once a week and strip your bed once a week. And I feel like if us parents, if we do all those things for them, when they get to that stage where they're moving into home ownership or they're moving into their apartment, their first apartment, how are they going to entertain and what their place is going to look like when they have family over? So I kept some of my Jamaican heritage in that, in like, it's teamwork. You know, everybody has a job and everything is not falling on mom or falling on dad. And so, yeah, I've, found that happy medium, not giving them too much responsibility, but definitely giving them responsibility to teach them um, life lessons, right? So I mentioned that I was the family babysitter at an early age in my family. And when my mom had her business, I had to like help with her business, with delivering and collecting money and different things like that. And with me being a small business owner now, my um, my 16 year old and my 11 year old definitely helped me with my business, right? They helped me set up for events. They proofread books and give me ideas, you know, so they definitely have to help me. Now, when it comes to jobs, one of the big things that um, my mom did not do with me was teaching me about money. And I feel like that's a common denominator for a lot of whether it's American parents or your parents are from, you know, the UK or they're from Asia or, you know, whatever. I feel like it's a common denominator um, for parents not really teaching their children about money unless you come from like wealth, right? And I feel like it's not because they didn't want to, but they didn't have the skills to. And that was the situation with my mom. My mom did not necessarily teach me about savings. Um, I knew about bills. I knew the basics about bills, but she didn't teach me about investing for the future and things like that. And I've definitely done it differently with my children. So one of the things that I've done with my kids is when they turn one year old, I open a bank account for them and I start putting money in it, right? They, and when they get a, uh, like a little bit older where whether it's an ice cream stand or a lemonade stand or, you know, they're doing chores for the neighbors and they get paid, 
my policy was always you save 50%. So 50% of whatever, even your birthday money, 50% goes into your bank account. And that's for your future, right? And then the rest you can spend on, you know, whether it's snacks or fun or whatever. I didn't really um, had like really tight boundaries with regards to what they would do with the other 50%, with the exception of they had to tithe. So I'm a Christian, I'm a devout Christian. I tithe out of all of the income that, you know, as a family that we earn. And I've passed that on to my kids, like whatever job you have, you know, God says you need to give 10% of your income to him, you know, to build his kingdom. And so I've enforced that with my, my kids and they've done that freely. It wasn't like a hard teach, um, you know, and then the saving piece. Now, some of them, like my older one, my daughter, she is massive at saving. She doesn't buy anything at full price. It's all about couponing and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And she got that for me, thank God. Um, you know, she's all about the savings and the investing. You know, they're more financially literate at their age than I was. I made all the mistakes, all the mistakes. And I'm still learning and growing. And so my middle son, Gabriel, he is the money man. He is all into stocks and investments and all of that kind of stuff. My younger one, he will spend all of his money on, you know, Minecraft and roadblocks and snacks. So I'm working on him. <laughs> I'm working on him. And he's not that, that way because I didn't teach him about saving and investing for your future. He's the last child. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the last kid, they're a little bit more totally different than the other ones. But, yeah, I did that differently in teaching my kids a little bit more about being financially literate because my mom did not teach me that because she didn't know. Right. She didn't know. You can't teach what you don't know and you can't um, have an expectation for your children to be a certain way that they weren't taught. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I'm super proud about. Um, my, my older son, Chris, he is also now learning, you know, about investing and saving and things like that. He was a little bit of a late bloomer in that department, but between me and his dad, you know, and his sister, he's now, into the fold of saving and not spending all your money on games and, you know, things like that. Right. So, um, yeah, those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about the difference between a traditional Jamaican, um, West Indian Island culture parenting, um, versus now an American modern day parenting. And because I'm a mix of the two, I'm a Jamaican, I still hold on to some of my Jamaican culture and, you know, my American culture in merging those two when it comes to parenting styles, parenting expectations, you know, all of that. I wanted to talk about that. So share in the comments, where are you from? What's your family dynamics? Are you straight American and you, you, you parent completely modern day or are you from somewhere else or a mix of cultures and you're trying to find that sweet spot of parenting your American child in a modern day, but really trying to keep some of the foundational um, pillars that are super important with like time management, education, chores, um, money expectations, um, discipline and all of that. Share in the comments, do you find modern day parenting difficult, easy? Um, I know it's been a dance. It's been a backward, you know, back and forth, two steps forward, one step back, you know, sideways, you know, mixing that with, you know, my faith, which is super important, you know, but each child is different. And, you know, I have to say with a 20, going to be a 28, 25 17 and going to be a 12 year old, especially the older ones, you know, if they haven't been in jail, if they haven't had to file bankruptcy, you know, if they haven't had any major devastating life changing struggles because of, you know, poor choices, then for me, that's a bonus. For me, that's a bonus that, you know, they can hold down jobs, 
they can hold down apartments and houses, they're saving. Um, and they don't think that I was a completely crazy mom. <laughs> um, certainly, you know, they do, they do think my younger, they do think, you know, maybe I was stricter in some areas or stricter with maybe my girl than my boys. You know, we have these family conversations, um, from time to time, but they definitely are thankful that I was their mom and not my mom because she didn't play no games and she did not hold back with going upside your head. If you stepped out of pocket, I'm more of a little bit more of a gentle parenting, um, a little bit more of a gentle parenting in that department. So share in the comments below your parenting style and your parenting, you know, how is it mixed? How is it working for you, girls versus boys, you know, different cultures. But I wanna thank you so much for stopping by my channel today and taking the time to dive into this video all about parenting. Have a great day, guys.